Hi, I'm Laura Marie. I use she, her pronouns, and I help run the Las Vegas Radical Mental Health Collective. Radical Mental Health is a big part of my life. This talk is called Radical Mental Health for Liberation and Love. Everything I say is offered in the spirit of my own learning with the desire to be helpful. Please take in what you might need and leave out what doesn't speak to you. I'd like to tell you how I came to Radical Mental Health and give an overview of the main ideas of Radical Mental Health. Radical Mental Health uh, corresponds with UU principles one, two, three, and six, especially. So justice, community, the inherent dignity and worth of all people. And the subject matter is important because mental health struggles are common for ourselves, our family members, our partner persons. We can all have big feelings. So how I found Radical Mental Health, I was diagnosed 15 years ago, bipolar one with psychotic features. And my diagnosis was changed to schizoaffective disorder bipolar type a few years ago, a few years later. I hear voices um, lifelong, so my whole life since I was a little child. And I also have big moods and some periods of paranoia. I was told I would never get better and that I would be on those um, powerful medicines for my whole life, which was not true. I also have social differences and sensory sensitivities, an ACE score of nine. I'm a trauma survivor. I have CPTSD and anxiety. So that first manic episode when I was diagnosed, I was told to seek help, but I was scared of the side effects of the medications that were being prescribed to me. So I Googled about and I found Icarus Project, which is, um, which is a radical mental health org that doesn't really exist anymore. It changed into another org. I was involved with that for 10 years and I went on a whole journey from um, resisting diagnosis to uh, accepting and embracing diagnosis as potentially helpful, re-rejecting diagnosis. And all of these layers of truth coexist uh, inside of me, like all pertinent at different times. I identify as crazy, which is a reclaiming of the word, kind of like queer and fat can be reclaimed um, as descriptors so that we can use their power, uh, their insulting power for liberation instead of for harm. Diagnosis is helpful for some people as a key to a door that you could open and maybe find new help and new support. But sometimes when I have a key and I open a door and I pass through the door, I don't need the key anymore. So um, some difficulty is a power imbalance that I experience. When I'm in a psychiatrist's office, I feel danger there because in a psychiatrist's office, I can lose my freedom if I say the wrong thing. And I can also lose access to things that I need, like medication, if I have medication that I like. If I say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, I can have what I need taken away. Also, I've often just been weighed and weighted in an overwhelming waiting room, sensorily and socially. Also, when I'm in a psychiatrist's office, as a person with a diagnosis under the schizophrenia umbrella, especially, I'm not seen or addressed as a person. So if my spouse comes in with me, often my spouse will be addressed as a person, as a, as a man appearing person, um, which is painful for me. Um, so radical mental health for me is the opposite of a psych psychiatrist office situation. It's a situation where instead of losing my power and being at the whim of someone else's choices, where instead um, I am unconditionally valid. So um, a big idea for me of radical mental health is how crazy is a normal variation of person and that we all belong at the table of humanity. So radical mental health is about compassion, seeing a person as a person, respecting the mystery 
of us all. It's joyful to have choices and options and to maintain uh, the freedom that I need. It's really important to me to dodge that harm of that psychiatrist's office that I can receive. Radical mental health is pro-choice about medication. So there's a whole spectrum of engagement from people who say the medicine's poison to people who take their medicine every day and, and go to the doctor, you know, monthly or whatever. And then everything in between, people who use medicine sometimes, not others, or for certain things, not others. Radical mental health is about personal empowerment. So not just doing what doctor says necessarily, but uh, being in charge of my own body and my own life. It's also about how friends make the best medicine. So that's fanciful to imagine the love as a medicine or the friendship as a medicine. But it's also literal because we know that isolation can be really harmful to people and community and love are really important to our well-being as social animals, most of us. So radical mental health for me is a lot about forming pockets of happiness. And hopefully this happiness can reverberate out and we can build skills together. And we can not just keep the skills to ourselves, but to bring the skills, you know, everywhere we go. So to bring the skills elsewhere. Something else important about radical mental health for me is building long-term well-being. So it's not really about being saved dramatically at the last minute, but about, um, although that could happen too, but it's more about uh, building like the resiliency that will help us um, in the long run. It's great to have a lot of tools in my toolbox. So I, I feel a lot safer if I have 20 tools in my toolbox instead of just two or three. So if I have exercise, emotional first aid kit, ecstatic dance, therapy, meditation, acts of service, nature, art making, peer counseling, you know, many, many things, then I, I feel a lot safer. Radical mental health is also DIY. There's an anarchist motivation to it when uh, I'm not waiting for someone else. I'm not waiting for a government or a charity to help someone who I love or myself. I see the need and I step in to do that. Also, there's horizontal power. So we're the experts of ourselves and the power dynamic feels much safer where it's not the expert that's up above and then me who's down below who's submitting to their will. Also, it's free, at least like the radical mental health as we do it in Las Vegas. So there's no red tape. It's easier to not have those layers of requirements um, or forms or money or having to prove that I deserve something, deserve services. And radical mental health is about resisting the myth of needing experts for things like suicide prevention. I think we're all helping each other all the time to stay alive. And psychiatrists have never saved me, but love has saved me. The US outcomes after psychiatric hospitalization for suicide attempt, um, you know, the person uh, may be likely to be alive, but people um, for the most part are not coming out of the hospital happy, well, and equipped to live good lives. People are coming out more drugged. I was overly sedated on the bipolar cocktail that I was on for 11 years. I was uh, sleeping 10 to 12 hours a night and a lot less creative than I am now. And that's not the life that I choose. So the togetherness of um, the community against loneliness and seeing each other as actual whole beings is really important to me because doctors usually see just a sliver of me and make a lot of assumptions based on how I appear or how uh, my mood is in that moment. But when I step into a radical mental health space, I'm acknowledged as, a, as an entire being. There's mutual aid emotionally in the meetings and the um, gatherings of radical mental health. And there's also mutual aid materially. So in the Las Vegas Radical Mental Health Collective meetings, we have a mutual aid moment where we can offer and ask for material things. And I.
without, you know, getting harmed for that. So a little about the origins is that uh, radical mental health, one of the early groups, like I mentioned, was the Icarus Project. There's the psychiatric survivor movement, which is more political, like protesting uh, restrictive laws that harm the people with diagnoses like me. You know, there's uh, NAMI. NAMI is a really popular, big um, nonprofit that exists to fight stigma and mostly to support the family members of the diagnosed person, not the crazy person ourselves. NAMI sees mental illness as a brain disease and wants to fight stigma and help people return to a normal life. But radical mental health shifts the onus from mental illness is a personal problem of weakness to mental illness is a problem with culture. Uh, so I don't, you know, I don't want to get back to normal. I have a meaningful life as a disabled person. And I believe that normal is killing us and harming Mother Earth. The radical mental health model is more that trauma led to coping strategies that saved me as a child. But I'm safer now and I don't need those coping strategies so I can heal. But I've learned very important truths from my experiences, like all the people I know who are doing radical mental health. So we can use these important truths that we've learned in solidarity to make justice. The Icarus Project taught me about dangerous gifts and that there's nothing wrong with my brain. It's just different. And um, society failed to protect me as a young person or nurture me into a functional worker. So it's not wrong that I can't work. It's, it's wrong that the world uh, requires unreasonable consistency for me. I'm not disabled by schizoaffective disorder. I'm disabled by capitalism, norms, and psychiatry. My needs are valid and okay, as yours are. I need less stress, more compassion, more love. Radical mental health is about justice and a new system, the abuse in hospitals and people who are imprisoned there and being othered painfully in uh, medical clinical situations. Um, also, there's the power of the pharmaceutical companies that's painful. I see it when I go into a medical context in the drug reps that come bringing lunch and donuts, posters, swag, and notepads with the names of drugs imprinted on them. I'm unconditionally valid and uh, the world needs change. There are some things that I can adjust to and learn to live with, um, but some things gotta go, right? Radical mental health is not just critical of the system, but we have faith in a new future that we could do better. And for the hour and a half of a radical mental health meeting, we do better. So the, the collective here started in May of 2017, same as the Las Vegas Street Medics. The, the, the collective was formed when Tashi Brown was killed by police in a racist murder in 2016. Tashi Brown um, was running from the like came up to the cops to ask for help and then was running and was killed by them. So there's an artist named Ravi Zupa who heard about Tashi Brown's murder and wanted to donate money to the people, to some people in Las Vegas toward de-escalation. So that's how the collective was initially formed. Uh, so we'll be five years in May. We've been meeting at least twice a month for almost five years for support, art, garden days, dance, journaling workshops. And while we meet, we build communication skills, caring skills, share ideas. We do healing. We find trust or relearn trust. Like I mentioned, there's mutual aid. So that's care outside of the mainstream medicine and care outside of capitalism. So we reach people that might be missed. Um, it's advanced because many of us in the radical mental health have been through the system in many ways, forced, voluntary, arrested, addiction. And we find common ground with respectfulness and a lot of diversity. We have a solidarity model. So um, there's no well person leading the way. We're all the experts of ourselves. 
And we have the dream of a Soteria house, which is an alternative to psychiatric hospitalization for people in crisis. So um, some last few ideas are that um, mental health struggles are very common. I'll mention that I work with radical mental health and a lot of people tell me their secret that there was a time in their life where they were incapacitated or hospitalized in a psychiatric facility. And it's very interesting how most people have this secret. This secret that's supposed to be like shameful and hidden is actually extremely common. So by doing radical mental health, we're sharing uh, an unpopular truth, but that a very common truth. Radical in this context is meaning to the root. So we're not talking about cosmetic changes to a system or um, rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, but actually making a new plant, not just pruning the old plants. But I don't need to destroy the norm by tearing down mainstream medicine. I can create like something else to the side that's um, happy and, and fun with more choices. Um, so the people who want the mainstream model can have the mainstream model, but then people who need something different can have something different too. And uh, ultimately, I would say the goal is to create a culture where we're all unconditionally valid and where love is more important than money. So thank you for hearing about radical mental health as part of disability justice and a way of doing love and liberation. I hope that you're getting the support and love that you need in your own life. And um, you're welcome to learn more about our collective also. Thanks.